On the last NAS build, you saw the massive screw up we made with picking old hardware, where we basically picked the worst combination we could find for a build. That's right, we make mistakes so you don't have to. It did allow us to test everything on the cheap though, but not long term as power bills in the summer in Taiwan get pretty high. But how about a media editing NAS server using newer stuff? Today we'll get to some choices and tips for your build. But before I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes, are you sure that you can take this red pill? Your support helps us make content like this, so please take a second to subscribe to us here and we'll try to answer your hardware questions and updated info for this video will be on the techspinreview.com companion post. Do you want to see how to upgrade your home office to 10G networking? Show your support. How about if this video could reach 100 likes? Keeping our media editing NAS cool reliably over the long term is our sponsor, Noctua. Noctua's Redux Edition offers premium case cooling with industry-grade hydro bearings and vortex control blade tip notches for supremely quiet and exceptional long-term operation, and they won't break the bank. Check them out at the link below. Lock screen boring? We made one. Free download, link in the description. What's going to contain your build? Finding a case for a media editing NAS can be tough, though Fractal has a new Define 7 XL that holds 16 drives if you grab sleds, and there's an optional glass side. The cheapest option by far is a Cooler Master N300 or N400, but drive access will be rough, and there's no rubber mounts. There's also rack mounts, but those are usually too noisy for living space. Instead, we went with this Fractal Define R5, which came out a while back, but is still pretty available, coming just under 100 bucks with eight bays and shock mounts, and bonus, it also looks great. For motherboards, we suggest one with three PCIe x16 slots. Most B450 and even new B550 don't have the three slots that we're looking for. However, choosing an AMD CPU like a Ryzen 5 3400G may actually help, as the G is for integrated graphics and may take away the need for a slot. We're putting a SAS to SATA card in one slot already and a 10 or 40 gigabit networking card in the other uh, in the future. A mid-range CPU like a Ryzen 3600 or this 3700X, which is overkill for this, or Intel i5-9400 or newer is plenty for immediate editing NAS and 16 gigs of RAM unless you want to run some VMs. A cheap 512 gig Gen 3 NVMe M.2 runs 60 bucks, providing excellent read-write cache speed unless you have a smaller spare lying around and NAS hard drives sit around 100 bucks for four terabytes, pick fewer big terabyte drives over more smaller capacity drives. We were going to recommend Noctua anyways before they surprised us by sponsoring. Their Redux case fans are a terrific choice for silent, long-lasting cooling. You also need to have a USB stick to donate to Unraid and get any SAS to SATA data cables, and you'll probably need some SATA power splitters for the drives. You also need an Unraid license if you pick that, and a UPS for surge protection and external backup too. And choosing components with low wattage requirements will actually cost you less in the long run. So what the heck is a NAS anyways? A NAS is a network attached storage server connected to your network. We're building a media editing NAS as we're often editing in Premiere and Photoshop at the same time on an episode. So having fast access to data with multiple PCs is crucial. Determine your case needs first. This is the hardest part of the build. Few cases have more than four hard drive bays and inline bays make installation and maintenance a pain. Our Fractal Define R5 is ideal actually, having modular hard drive bays with direct fans for cooling and great cable management. And with sub $100 pricing, the sound dampened interior panels muffle any noise, though 10 bucks more gets you a TG side panel if you wanna show it off. This 8-bay Define R5 should be enough for any small to mid-size office, but if you need massive storage, the new Fractal Define 7XL holds up to 16 drives, 4 by default, so the case is 200, and 6 2-pack sleds is an extra 84 bucks, and tack on 10 more if you want to get a TG side panel. Okay, for motherboards, ASRock actually has a division called ASRock Rack, which is a favorite among server builders. But if you want to repurpose or even sell this down the line, you could use a cheap B450 AMD board and Ryzen 5 3600 or Intel Z490 or 590 boards. The Asus ROG Strix B450F Gaming that Linus Tech Tips found runs three x 16 slots at PCIe 3.0 x 8 x 8 and PCIe 2.0 x 4, also supporting headless mode. However, three slots seems to be an elusive Bigfoot for B450 and B550, a bit more common for X470 and the newer X570, which is for Intel. A lot of mainstream Intel CPUs like these have integrated graphics, eliminating the need for a graphics card. 
Some AMD CPUs have onboard graphics, designated only with a G like the 3200G, but mainstream offerings don't. So even if the motherboard itself has HDMI or DisplayPort out, it won't work with uh, 3600, 3700X, or 5900X, for example. The upside though is AMD unofficially supports ECC or error correcting RAM, and you'll need that if you run ZFS file systems on your NAS. For Intel, there's the new Gigabyte Z590 Vision D, that would be a good media editing NAS option. 3 x 16 slots at PCIe 4.0 x 8 x 8 and 3.0 x 4, and we'd pair that with a Core i5 10600K. The Vision G has 3 x 16 slots at PCI 4.0 x 16 and 3.0 x 4 x 4. With three slots, you can use SAS to SATA cards, supporting eight to 16 hard drives each card. This one supports eight with two ports, and a slot for 10 or 40 gig networking expansion. And by the way, if you find a good motherboard, please do let us know and we'll add it to the web post. MSI sponsored us a B550 Tomahawk here today, thanks guys. And along with Lightning Gen 4 M.2, it's got good VRMs, uh, 2.5 and 1G LAN ports, and USB Type-C 10 gig, along with PCIe 4.0x16 and 3.0x4. We've got an AMD 3700X here, cooled by a random thermal take for filming, but for a long term, we'll probably use a Noctua entry-level air cooler that they just released. Team Group is providing the RAM for the build, uh, two sticks of Vulkan Z3200 CL16 16GB, 432 gigs total, it's a bit overkill, 16 will be plenty unless again you're doing VMs. Team Group also supplied the MP33 Pro M.2 PCIe 512GB SSD with a read write of 2100 and 1700 megabytes a second. A PCIe M.2 drive is great in a media editing NAS for super fast cache for Unraid, though if you have a lower capacity spare, that's fine. Just don't buy a new uh, M.2 less than 512 gigs, that way you have future options. And if your motherboard comes with an M.2 heatsink, use it. Keep in mind installing a second or third M.2 drive will often disable SATA motherboard ports. With just one M.2 and six hard drives, the motherboard SATA ports will connect to everything. But for more drives, you could go with a PCIe to SATA 2 or 4 port card, but for just a little bit more, grab an SAS 8 or 16 port breakout card instead. This LSI SAS HBA Fujitsu D2607A21 is pre-flashed into IT mode, just 65 bucks. Each mini SAS port supports four SATA hard drives for a total of eight, and there are four port cards for 16 drives, still not expensive. If you grab a pre-flashed LSI card, you don't have to mess around in Linux for hours either. With this card, we grab mini SAS to four SATA breakout cables, about 10 a pop. Even if you don't grab an SAS card, you'll still need some SATA male to five port SATA female power cables to juice your drives. Those drives must be also NAS drives, which are rated for 24 seven operation. A regular hard drive will die much faster with all drives resonating and hard drives must have fans cooling them. Please take a moment to hit like, get subscribed and click the bell. It supports us and you'll get notified of our latest videos and reviews. The Define R5 comes with dual 14 centimeter fans. We've actually moved the rear one into the front so we can install dual Noctua NFP12 Redux up top and a larger NFP14 uh, Redux at the back. The P is for high static pressure, ideal for radiators or getting air through cramped spaces like lots of hard drives. There's lower speed models if you need a super quiet case and they have airflow optimized versions too. 12 centimeter fans are going for around 14 bucks and the 14 centimeter we saw on sale was down from $22. If you're blinging up your case with RGB and a TG glass side, Cooler Master has both 120 mil sickle flow and halo ARGB fans for 50 and $65 in three packs. We grabbed a halo for the TD500 mesh review and it looks good and does the job. Link up here for that review. For a PSU, you should get one with at least an 80 plus bronze rating and 450 to 500 watts is fine because there's no GPU. It just needs to handle the initial boot power load and then everything will idle pretty quick. We had a choice between the EVGA BD450 or the FSP X85 plus uh, 450. Even though the EVGA has a decent efficiency curve and black cables, we ultimately chose FSP because of the slightly better efficiency curve which will save money long term. To figure load, calculate each hard drive at 9 watts max and 2 amps per hard drive and split that over your PSU Molex and SATA leads. Check how much your system takes at boot, all combined that should be under the PSU's rating. Now even though there's 10, 40 and 100 gig switches in data centers, they all use fiber optic or copper SFP plus connectors, not your typical RJ45. 
If you're interested in how to set this up, throw us a like and comment about what kind of application you're building, and please subscribe too. Any SFP Plus setup with a NAS and a few computers is likely to run several hundred dollars, though eBay has SFP Plus 10 gigabit PCIe cards around 40 bucks and SFP Plus 40 gigabit for around 100. Good savings on building your media editing NAS. So good old RJ45 gigabit networking, at least for now, where an eight port switch is super cheap at just 20 bucks. Newer hard drives deliver around 170 megs a second, SSDs max out around 500, and we'll need to test Unraid to see if it reliably pulls whole projects into the ultra fast cache area to be worth the 10 gig upgrade. And don't forget the copy to drive on your PC needs to be a super fast M.2 drive also. Copying data to your NAS folder by folder is fine at first, but what about syncing data to your media editing NAS after that? Uh, for us, we actually use Always Sync. It's an ultra reliable folder sync program we use for all of our files and is flawless so far. The one caveat is that if you do changes on both target folders, you'll need to sort through which version that you want to keep, but you can set up auto handling rules and sync frequently so this won't happen. Always Sync, by the way, is $26 uh, for a lifetime license and $16 for a second license and it's well worth it. All this fancy equipment, and it's all unprotected from blackouts or power surges. We did an episode with CyberPower, link up here, about what to look for in a UPS, and you should get one right after your setup and testing. If your drives survive a zap, Parity rebuilds can still take 12 to 14 hours per four terabytes, so can you afford the downtime? If you're serious about a NAS, you'll need to be serious about backing it up too. On the Unraid forums, we found an rsync setup guide, which we'll link in the description, but I suck at Linux, and so I'll be using Always Sync again to push the data. If you find a better or different easy Unraid step-by-step -step backup guide, tell us and we'll also add it to the web post. We're reusing the Amazon Refurb HGST NAS drives from the last build, one four terabyte as parity and two more four terabyte and five three terabyte uh, for a 23 terabyte array. You should be careful about power draw from older drives anyways. Uh, new huge capacity drives are best. Unraid will assign the largest as the parity drive. Buying new, Toshiba 10 terabyte NAS drives are a good deal at around 300 bucks each, and we'll be upgrading our media editing NAS next year. We talked about Unraid setup a little in our last video, but it was pretty straightforward. Uh, just a couple of uh, changes in BIOS and then it was up and running pretty quickly. Last video, our decade old EVGA classified SR2 boot up to array was two minutes, uh, five seconds. And this new MSI B550 Tomahawk does it in one minute, 32 seconds, which is a nice improvement here. Note the Unraid one-time license fee is 60 bucks for six storage devices, 90 for 12, which is probably what we'll need here, and 134 unlimited, and the parity drive and M2 cache count towards this. So power draw is a factor for many. With the base system, no hard drives, we saw 124 watts at power on, 85 watts booting up, and 63 watts after a minute with the array running. With the drives connected, we see 263 watts at power on, uh, 190 watts uh, during boot, and 107 watts, as you can see here, at one minute into the array. This is okay, but it's why choosing newer high capacity drives is important. You can get more space using less power like Seagate Ironwolf 12 terabyte NAS drives, which power on at eight watts and idle at 0.8 watts and 88% energy saving over these drives. If you decide to pick parts on Amazon, clicking through our MSI R Noctua links and searching for what you need will help us a bit here with no extra cost to you. And follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Techspin Review. And we have companion posts up at techspinreview.com. We have lots of tech reviews coming, so be sure to check those out too. This episode took over 100 hours from research to writing and revisions, sourcing components and testing and assembly with a normal filming, editing, upload and SEO and social media and website posts. We sincerely thank MSI and Noctua, as well as a little assist from Team Group who jumped in to help. Also, a special shout out to forums.servethehome.com. Their community was really helpful and instrumental in shaping this and the last episode. It's getting harder to find motherboards with three PCIe slots or more. Why are newer chipsets offering less slots? Anyways, if you find a great motherboard for a media editing NAS or have an awesome build, share it with us below or on Facebook. Leave your best episode opening lines and we might just pick yours next time. We've got this MSI B550 motherboard review coming and more hardware soon. So thanks for watching guys. Please hit like if this gave you some good info and check out the links in the video description. You can help us grow directly by hitting subscribe, the bell, and if you have a question or if we miss something, please do tell us down below, along with your ideas for what you want to see next. Thanks for watching and see you soon.